so because uh, you know East Asia is very reliant on the uh, export. You know, for example, people say that all oh, this uh, now a lot of trade between East Asian countries, and maybe the region can survive without uh, trade. Uh, well, with less trade with the U.S. and the European Union. But uh, just uh, think about it. I mean, the China at the moment exports hugely to the U.S. and the EU. And countries like Japan and Korea make money by supplying China with the machines and intermediate inputs that it needs uh, to produce exports uh, to EU and the US. Uh, so if uh, you know, demand uh, collapses in the EU the, or the US, uh, China will be hit and that will hit the, the Japan and Korea and other countries in the region. So I, I don't think that uh, East Asia can survive this, uh, given this uh, very high external dependence. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you have any vision on the future of the nation states in terms of the global crisis? Um, so do, do you think that the nation state is still the, the ultimate vehicle you know, to conduct economic policy? Um, or so, so my question is basically how do you see the, the issue of global governance and how do you see it evolving as a result of this crisis, which is in some ways a struggle between you know, global financial flows yeah. and only limited power on the nation-state level to, mm. Mm. to regulate yeah, and limit that power? Mm. No, I mean, uh, it is uh, true that uh, the process of globalization, especially the spread of the financial capital, has uh, significantly reduced uh, policy autonomy of uh, na national government. So, you know, I mean, a lot of government worry about the bond investors and, you know, transnational corporations, and they make their policies. But on the other hand, paradoxically, globalization has made the nation state more important in another sense, because, you know, now capital can move freely. I mean, the skilled labor, the seem like it's going to be a, a bit of a problem because even in Kuala Lumpur, say for example, or Bangkok, uh, if you have a mass influx of people from Laos, uh, Burma, and Cambodia, um, how, how do you deal with that? That's going to be a major political issue, right? Or, or some yeah, sort of thing. There'll be, uh, that before anything else, there'll be physical problems. I mean, how, where do you house these people? I mean, how do you provide transport for these people? I mean, uh, how do you deal with you know, the congestion and so on? And then the, 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 after that, we'll have to deal with issues with uh, human rights and labor rights and so on. You know, I mean, are the uh, Thais uh, the willing to give the same rights uh, to the Cambodians? I mean, you know, the, uh, these are the very difficult issues. And I think uh, they uh, need to prepare for this uh, uh, better before they uh, jump into it. Uh, Hachun, I have a, this is Michelle again. I have a question about the seeming incapability of the global system to deal with major challenges, uh, and I'm thinking specifically about climate change. Uh, but you know, more in general, the, the crisis of the biosphere and the fact that uh, at least three of the nine planetary boundaries have been breached already. 
Um, so it seems to me, and, and according to quite a few other people, that the planet, um, you know, is a certain kind of danger, um, at least at least for human life. Um, and it seems at the same time that our global system is paralyzed. So do you, do you see any any solution? First of all, do you see? Do you think the solution should come within? You know the, the same economic system that we have. Is it capable of that change? Um, if yes, you know what kind of change. If no, uh, do you see any other system uh, possible? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what what's your view on, on how we can tackle these global problems? Yeah. No. I mean uh, we are facing an unprecedented problem because uh, in the past, uh, if you had uh, the environmental problems, I mean over time technologies uh, have solved this problem because uh, that sooner or later uh, someone will invent uh, things uh, that will deal with these problems. Now, for this uh, the time, but we are racing against the clock, you know, I mean, for all I know, I mean, someone might come up with uh, the new invention that will uh, allow us to avoid this uh, global warming problem in the next, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 years. On the other hand, uh, that technology might come you know, 500 years later, but then uh, it's too late. So I think uh, we are uh, facing an unprecedented pro problem. Now, I, I see your point in the, the implying that the current capitalist system devoted to uh, relentless uh, pursuit of the growth and profit uh, may not be suited uh, to deal with this problem, but uh, and then and I agree with you on that, but uh, well, one problem is that if we try to transition to another system that carries its own cost, then uh, that might uh, disrupt uh, things even more. So, that, I mean, we, we are in a uh, very uh, difficult situation. I mean, I, I mean it, I mean, on the positive side, at least uh, the, the majority of uh, people accept that, that there is a serious problem with uh, global warming. That, and it's a uh, very difficult uh, solution because uh, we, we uh, have to completely change our consumption pattern, which also requires uh, the, the changes in living arrangements. You know, I mean, the Europeans find it uh, that very easy to be virtuous against the Americans, saying they were, uh, you know, the, why don't you cycle to your work? But, okay, I mean, uh, some guy who lives in uh, Belgium can uh, cycle for five miles to work, but if you are stuck in a suburb in the middle of Texas, uh, you are not going to cycle the, the 70 miles, miles uh, the each way for your work. So, you know, we need to reorganize uh, the, our living space and uh, develop uh, clean energy and uh, all sorts of things. So, yes, uh, we have a major challenge and but uh, what can you do? I mean, uh, you know, uh, you can uh, you know, criticize the inadequacy of uh, the global governance system today, but I mean, that's uh, what we have and uh, we have to work with it. So I, I just hope that everyone uh, recognizes uh, the seriousness of this uh, problem and then uh, we'll uh, the make uh, more progress because uh, there, there, there is a section of people with uh, power and money who are just in denial about this. Yeah. And I, I think uh, that removing that, that, that probably would be a start. So where, where do you see the, the sources of hope today? I mean, uh, well, I mean, the hope is uh, in the people because, uh, you know, today, uh, a, especially among the younger generation, I mean, there's a the natural acceptance that uh, we can uh, keep uh, the consuming our natural environment and uh, the destroy it, uh, what is uh, irreplaceable. And, you know, I mean, uh, even compared to, say, 15, 20 years ago, there's a huge amount of uh, uh, kind of awareness about this uh, environmental problem. Well, I think uh, that's uh, the greatest uh, source of uh, change because uh, without that recognition, you know, people are not going to get interested, they are not going to get organized, they are not going to pressure the decision makers. But I mean, the, the fact that this awareness is there is uh, our greatest asset, and uh, I, I believe that uh, that awareness is uh, much more. Uh, and widespread and much stronger among the younger generations. So that I, I, in that sense, I hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 
I think that this is a great way to, to end here and we can continue the conversation in, in time and see what maybe we can check back with you in a year and see what happens uh, as, as Occupy begins to move, as the miners in Spain are, are protesting and so on, um, and, and see what happens here. That would be a really yeah. great thing. Yeah, yeah no, I meant, uh, you know, the social changes uh, do not happen in a predictable way. I mean, you know, uh, I still remember the, some, some of the older generation people saying that, oh, I was in Paris uh, two weeks before May 1968, and I would have not even imagine that uh, there would be something like what happened two weeks later, you know, I mean, who would have thought that uh, Mubarak uh, will be in jail uh, <laughs> after uh, uh, decades of you know, iron fist rule, and who would have thought that uh, Gaddafi would be deposed in that kind of way. So, you know, I mean, the, the, the fact that, that things look quiet on the surface with a bit of bubbling here and there doesn't mean that, that, that people are taking this uh, the, 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 as inevitable and you know, I mean, the, 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 there will be the, uh, pressure for changes and uh, changes will happen. I mean, unfortunately, the you know, people at the top with the power and money, I mean, the, they, of course, uh, don't want change. Uh, so they are doing everything to slow this down and reverse changes, you know, I mean, for example, when just uh, for one example, when the U.S. Congress imposed that famous glass steel lack uh, breaking up uh, retail banking from uh, mm -hmm. investment banking in 1933, yeah. the American banks were basically given one year to implement all the changes. These days, uh, the, the, we are talking about uh, through the reform of the Basel uh, regulation, we are talking about uh, requiring the banks to have more capital reserve, which is much, uh, much uh, kind of a uh, milder kind of a form of reform. And we are giving the banks uh, seven years to do it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> you can uh, imagine that <laughs> uh, what uh, kind of lobbying must have been going on the, behind the scenes. So, I mean, it's uh, very disappointing, but you know, the, in the end, the why do we want democracy? Why do we have a belief in people because uh, in the end uh, the people have to rise up and uh, demand changes. Uh, without that, uh, people at the top will do their best uh, to minimize uh, the, any meaningful reform. Uh, ha Jun, thank you so much and um, we wish you the best. Yes, thank you so much for your interesting yeah, yeah, sure. insights. Bye, bye, Lane. bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Ha Jun. Thank you.